Good morning. I'm Dr. Brian Shapiro, a technical writer at ATCC. Thank you for joining us for the latest installment in the 2016 ATCC Excellence in Research webinar series entitled Functionally Characterized Human PBMCs, an Improved In Vitro Model of Human Immune Response, presented by Dr. Alexei Mikoff. Dr. Mikoff is a senior scientist at ATCC Cell Systems. In this presentation, Dr. Mikoff will discuss applications for using PBMCs in research. Emphasis will be placed on using screening studies to characterize the lot-specific functional activity as a method for selecting cells to address individual experimental goals. If you have any questions for our speaker, please use the chat function available through the webinar program. All questions will be answered as time allows at the end of the presentation. Any remaining questions, as well as the recorded webinar presentation, will be archived on the ATCC website, www.atcc.org. So with that, I would like to welcome Dr. Mikoff. Thank you very much, Dr. Shapiro, for the introduction. I also would like to thank everyone who joined our webinar. Let me start my presentation by providing you with background information on history and mission of American type culture collection. Founded in 1925, ATCC is a private, independent, non-profit organization that serves and supports the scientific community with biological products and innovative solutions. We are leading biological resource center, BRC, and provider of biological standards and products and encompassing a broad range of biological materials, including continuous cell lines, bacteria, fungi, nucleic acids, and reagents. PBMCs, or peripheral blood mononuclear cells, the subject of our today presentations, are morpholo morphologically distinct set of nucleated white blood cells. Unlike polymorphonuclear cells, they appear to have a single well-defined nucleus. PBMCs include monocytes and lymphocytes. The latter can be further divided into natural killer or NK cells as well as T and B cells. NK and monocytes represent in innate immunity and T and B lymphocytes are the key cells of adaptive immune system. PBMCs are the main source of primary human cells for immunology research. Publication analysis demonstrates that scientific interest in PBMCs remains high for the past two decades. The cells have traditionally been used in basic research. However, recently they are being utilized in high throughput drug screening, as well as in development of vaccines, biologics, and cellular therapeutics. Furthermore, PBMCs are used for immunogenicities and immunotoxicity studies. Overall, human PBMCs offer accessible and physiologically relevant experimental model of human immunity. However, the functional response of these cells is extremely variable. In this webinar, I would like to discuss factors driv driving this variability and the approaches to minimizing impact of this phenomenon on your research. Factors affecting PBMC variability can be broadly divided into two groups, events affecting donors and factors affecting cells directly, typically after the cells have been collected and purified. Genetic variability, donor immunization history, nutrition, and presence of latent infections are just a few factors that affect, affect donors directly. Cell viability, 
cryopreservation methods, immunophenotype, cell culture medium composition, and quality of the cell activation reagents used in functional assay influence cells directly. In combination, all of the above factors can greatly affect the experimental results and need to be carefully monitored. ATCC offers primary human cells. For collection and production of these cells, we implement a comprehensive quality assurance system to monitor all of the above factors uh, that can affect quality and of cells and influence PBMC assay reproducibility. Specifically, all PBMC provided by us are collected from pre-qualified healthy volunteer, volunteer donors. Our donor population is very stable, which allows, allows to perform repeat collection from the same individual. With each vial of cells, we provide complete donor information, which includes gender, age, ethnicity, as well as blood and HLA type. At the time of each collection, donors are tested and certified to be free of common blood-transmitted infections. BMCs are isolated using gradient centrifugation. This method ensures highest purity and viability of isolated cells. Only cells showing greater than 95% viability are processed further. We utilize a fully validated cryopreservation protocol. Cells are preserved in protein-free cryopreservation solution, which minimizes potential detrimental effect on animal-derived proteins or sera upon functional activity of human PBMCs. All cells undergo comprehensive immunophenotyping analysis. Careful isolation, processing, and Cryopreservation ensures excellent post-thaw recovery of our cells, which routinely exceeds 90%. All of the above data are available to our customer prior to cell purchase, so they can select a specific lot of cells that meet their specific requirements. Furthermore, upon customer request, select lots of PBMC can be characterized further in a panel of functional assays. In the next few slides, I'm going to present results of one such characterization run and discuss how this data can help you select specific PBMC lots that are most appropriate for your experiments. For this experiment, we selected cells isolated from a diverse group of five unrelated donors. The age of the donors varied from 30 to 51 years old, with the medium age of 43 years old for the group. Majority of the donors were males. All donors had different blood and HLA type. As I mentioned before, post recovery of our PBMC routinely exceeds 90%. In this particular experiment, <coughs> viability of all cells was greater than 95%. All cells are immunophenotype. The, the characterization includes percentages of CD45 positive leukocytes, CD3 positive T cells with differential differential count of CD4 and CD8 positive T cells, CD14 positive monocytes, CD19 positive B cells, and CD56 positive NK cells. In complete immunophenotyping data presented here for all five donors, we can immediately appreciate variability in cellular compositions of PBMC isolated from different donors. For example, Donor A has a relatively low number of T cells and high number of monocytes and NKs, while Donor B 
had a high number of T cells and relative to low number of monocytes and NKs. For functional characterization experiments, we use a panel of extremely robust, commonly used, and widely available activators of, innate, of immune response. This panel includes T-cell-specific mitogenic antibodies in both soluble and bead-bound format, plant-derived lectins, specifically fetohemagglutinin, or PHA, and poc wheat mitogen, PWM, and agonist of toll-like receptors. The latter includes POLAC, agonist of TLR3, LPS, agonist of TLR4, and a small molecule pharmaceutical R848, agonist of both TLR7 and 8. We use cell proliferation and Luminex-based 11-plex cytokine release assay to assess functional activation of human PBMCs. Overall, these assays are representative of T-cells activation, pro-inflammatory, and antiviral immune response. The stimuli and assay redoubts are selected to assess activation of both adaptive and innate immune system. The experiment itself is conducted over a five-day period. On day zero, cells are thawed, counted, and resuspended in, in serum-free medium. I would like to highlight that the use of such media mitigates the non-specific activation of human PBMC by any multi-derived product, which reduces background and activation and greatly improves assay reproducibility. Then, cells are treated on the same day in six replicate wells. For cytokine release assays, supernatants are collected from non-overlapping triplicate wells at 24 and 48 hours. Cell proliferation is measured on day five of the experiment. Prior to commencing the main study, we evaluated different assays for measuring T-cell proliferation. From the technical point of view, this assay can be broadly divided into three categories. Assay is measuring DNA synthesis, assay enumerating number of cell divisions, um, also known as fluorescent dye dilution assays, and three, assay is measuring cell viability. The latter typically utilizes methods for assessing metabolic activity of viable cells. Historically, method measuring DNA synthesis, or more specifically, thymidine incorporation assay, is considered to be a golden standard. However, more recently, other assay platforms have gained in popularity. In this pilot experiment, we stimulated cells with soluble or bit-bound antibodies, PHA, or poquit mitogen, or LPS. The cells incubated with uh, medium only served as a negative control. After five days in culture, T cell proliferation was measured using either flow cytometry based DNA synthesis assay, fluorescent dye dilution assay, or cell viability assay. Uh, the result of all three assays are presented in these three um, bar graphs. In our hands, all methods provided a very robust and similar, in principle, uh, response. For the main experiment, we selected method measuring cell viability. The selection was mainly driven by simplicity of the methods and wide availability of the reagents and instrumentation needed to perform this assay to scientific community. We also confirmed specificity and functional activity of the cell activation reagents that we used. The results are presented in this graph. Uh, as expected, T-cell-specific antibodies and 
plant-derived lectins induce production of T-cell-specific cytokines, such as interleukin-2 and interferon gamma, while TLR agonists have very limited activity in these assays. The pro-inflammatory response, specifically expression of interleukin-1 beta and IL-6, was induced by TLR-8 and TLR-4 agonist, as well as plant-derived lectins. The latter result is not unexpected, since these lectins have ability to cross-link cell surface, surface receptor in a non-specific manner. Thus, the lectins have ability to induce both T-cell and pro-inflammatory immune responses. As expected, TCR-specific antibodies and TLR agonists have minimal pro-inflammatory activity. And finally, TLR agonist poly IC was the only stimulus that induced appreciable production of interferon alpha. This compound mimics danger signal associated with viral infection and is well known as a potent inducer of antiviral immune response. This slide summarizes a complete data set for a single donor. It includes cell proliferation in the top left corner and the data for 11 plex cytokine expression. Essay. The result highlight differences in cell activation induced by different stimuli. For example, TCR-specific antibody are very potent inducers of cell proliferation, while POC with mitogen has a very modest proliferative activity. However, PWM is a very potent inducer of IL-2 expression while the T-cell-specific antibody had much lower activity in, the, in that assay. In the following slides, I'm going to present data showing that a single assay readout may not be sufficient to assay, assess activation of human immune cells, and multiple assay readouts are needed to accurately measure immune cell reactivity. For example, proliferation data for all five donors uh, presented in this slide show that cells from donor A, donor B, and donor D are very robust responders, while cells from donor C and E are much less reactive, as evidenced by difference between uh, proliferation in the control culture and the proliferation in uh, activated cells. However, if we look at interleukin-2 expression data, we may conclude that donor B and donor E have the most reactive T cells because they do express the highest level of interleukin-2 while donor, but the other donors have much lower level of expressions. And yet level of interferon gamma expression was approximately similar among all donors, but not in response to all stimuli. For example, cells from donor B, D, and E fail to produce interferon gamma in response to soluble T-cell-specific antibodies. In the case of interleukin-17 expression, we can clearly see the difference between the donors in both magnitude and response and sensitivity to different stimuli. For example, cells from donor B and E are very reactive 
and poke with mitogen induces highest level of interleukin 17 expression. While virtually no IL 17 is produced in response to stimulation with soluble anti CD3 and CD28 antibodies. Donor C is much less reactive but has a similar response profile. Specifically, in this case, POCVID mitogen is the most potent activation of IL-17 expression. On the other hand, cells from donor A respond most robustly to stimulation with the, uh, with the soluble T-cell specific antibody and, and less so to stimulation with the plant-derived lectins. And finally, interferon alpha expression showed the greatest donor variability. Only cells from donor A produce significant amount of this cytokine. To simplify data presentation for all donors across all SA conditions, we utilize a heat map uh, diagram. Here, the individual SA results are arranged in the rows. And the SA condition or the treatment in the columns. The data are normalized across each SA across all donors. The assay results are color-coded with red representing maximum, white medium, and blue minimal level of response. When presented in this format, a complete five, don five donor data set can be easily evaluated for selecting cells that have response profile most appropriate for specific experimental needs. For example, as I mentioned before, out of all five donors, only cells from donor A can, can be useful for investigation of interferon gamma alpha expression. Donors B and E are more suitable for interleukin-13 and interleukin-17 uh, expression studies. I also would like to highlight that when selecting cells for a specific experiment, we should consider not only differences in cell reactivity, but also, to, also the differences in cell sensitivity to a specific stimuli. Even when using such robust and commonly used activators as anti-CD3 and CD28 antibodies. As you have seen previously, cells from donor C and E, shown here and here, do not express interleukin-2 or interferon gamma in response to stimulation with soluble antibodies while they do express these cytokines in response, in response to stimulation of the beat bout antibodies. In conclusion, I would like to say that, or reiterate again, that functional activity of human PBMCs in vitro is extremely var variable. Factors contributing to this variability can be divided into two groups. Factors that can be controlled and factors that essentially uncontrollable and has to be accepted by scientific community. The factors that can be controlled are crazy preservation technique, cell viability and medium composition, as well as quality of cell activating reagents. And 
essentially all of the factors affecting the population, such as genetic diversity and environmental factors, including immunization, nutrition habit, and presence of unmanifested infection has to be accepted uh, uh, by the uh, scientist. To minimize assay variability, we recommend to first use serum or protein-free crab preservation solution. Ensure high viability of cells at the time of the experiment. Use either pre-qualified fetal bovine serum autologous plasma or our preferred solution serum free medium uh, to conduct functional analysis of human PBMC. And as I hope evidenced by this presentation, validate cell activation activating or control reagents. We also recommend use of functionally characterized cells and we do believe that using these cells can significantly mi minimize assay variability and improve reproducibility of experimental results. When selective specific load of characterized cells, one should consider assay readout, cell reactivity, ability to respond to a specific stimuli, and magnitude of the response. Thank you very much for the attention. And now I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Dr. Mikoff. In just a few moments, we will begin our Q&A session. Please use the chat function available through the webinar program to submit your questions. The session will be documented as a PDF and archived along with the recorded webinar presentation on the ATCC website at www.atcc.org.